Hello everyone. N2CUA here, Randy. Oh, uh, just playing a little bit again. And um, <laughs> a bit of a collection of DV DMMs here, right? And thought, you know, I wonder how accurate they are compared to each other. And in this case, repeatability between these two because they're the same model. And also, um, compare that to the Hewlett Packard um, 3478 I've got. So, um, I've got a power supply here that's a Lambda 5 volt supply. It's rated like 20 amps, so not to worry about it. The meter's loading it down in here. Um, so, I was going to measure the 5 volts with each of these meters, measure it with the HP as well, see how close they are, how close they are to each other, how close they are to the one that I know should be really, really accurate. And I'm just curious, you know, these are all Chinese knockoffs pretty much, and, um, and again, these two are the same, and it's Sentech. This one's Sentech as well, Chinese. They're all Chinese. This one's Mastech. It's one that's different. Um, and they also got one of these really you know, cheapo. This is, you know what you use this meter for? This is a meter you use when you're not sure about <laughs> what you're measuring, and you don't care if you fry it. That's what that meter's good for. I fried one of those. I have a transformer. Uh, it measures about 10 inches by 12 inches by 10 inches, 5,000 volts, and I had through a voltage divider, and I didn't think about the accumulation of gaps across it, not just the gaps across the two points where the power or the voltage goes into the board. It arced, meter went bye-bye. So, when you're not sure, <laughs> use a cheap one. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, if you want good precise measurements and you want repeatability, obviously you'd use a better meter and, you know, the flukes are, are actually uh, my favorites as far as handhelds go. But um, I have to say, you know, of all the meters I've used so far, these two have been the most uh, repeatable and um, consistent. I'm strange, strange enough. And um, nice, new, nice meter. It's, I took one apart. It's built fairly well inside. It's not sloppy or anything like that. Um, you know, it has a typical transistor port down here to test and you can do thermocouple. Um, that's frequency up to 20 kilohertz. Woo woo. Um, and temperature. I did that already. Thermocouple. This one was actually made, says automotive meter, I don't know if you can read that, but um, was made to do dwell and tachometer and stuff. And honestly, it's not rated very well. This is the Harbor Freight meters, by the way. Um, or at least that's where I got them. And people don't really care for them in the world of automotive. But I like the large display. Uh, seems to be pretty accurate from what I've seen so far. Um, the tone for uh, ohms is, or for ohms here, right? For continuity is nice and loud so I can hear it because I have tinnitus so my ears ring. And unfortunately it's at a high pitch. And some of the meters actually have a really high pitched tone. And it's just so annoying, you know. Anyway, I can do this quick. It looks like the battery in my camera is just telling me to hurry up. So, okay, let's measure with the uh, first Centec there. We'll put this, I had to go around the camera how to do this, but we will. Now, yeah, that's going to be a problem too, because I'm going to shadow the, the light source here. See if we can do this without shorting out. Okay, so we've got 5 volts on the first meter there. See that? I'm going to plug it, plug it into the second meter. And we got... 4.99, not going to toggle the 5, oh, it did, so you saw that, okay, so it's exactly the same as the other one, i to plug it into this one, at least it's repeatable between the meters, oh, 5 volts, oh, wow. okay, 499 toggling, just like the other one toggling, that's some kind of impressive all by itself, and then uh, this one here, a little hard to plug into, Let's see if I can get it in there, yeah, I missed it. Okay, can to see away, Randy, back. Um, I guess this is part two now because the battery died <laughs> while I was doing doing the original taping there. So, or taping, you know what I mean. Original video. So, um, where I left off, we were on the last meter. And these first three, uh, and my pointer, these first three measured five. That was like toggling between 4.99 and 5. This one was toggling between 4.99 and 5. And this one we don't know, so we're going to know in a minute. So they get the leads the right way around here. All right. And that one's um, not doing so well, huh? Oops. 
See, this one has been flaky in the past too, so yeah, not so good. No, although I have to say earlier, it looked like it measured a lot closer than it is now. So I have had problems with that mass tech meter before. So, and it's the second one. I fried one. Long story. Anyway, point being, not so happy with that one. I don't like the way it's built either on the inside. I might add to that. So I like the Syntex better than the mass tech. All right. One last thing to look at, um, and that's the <coughs> plug it into the HP. <coughs> And when I do that, I'm going to have to move the camera up there. Hopefully we can do that properly. <clears throat> okay. Now let's see, I can just pick it up and move it up there. we we'll take a look at that. And the HP is reading 5.0069. So, I mean, if that were to round up on a, you know, three and a half digit display or something, it might be 5.01 maybe, right? Still pretty close, you gotta admit. I mean, we're used that in HP compared to the uh, two Centex. Not so bad. You know, I mean, one meter is like a lot of money, and the other one's like not so much. All these little meters are pretty much not so much. So, anyway, um, just kind of a, again, a little bit of a recap there. But um, these two I really like, they're the same model, but I really like them. Not so good on dwell and tack, but really good on voltages, it seems. And I haven't measured other stuff with it yet. Um, I don't do AC voltage all that often, but, you know, same A to D and all that. Um, guess that's all I have to say about it. So, on the little meter down here, I think it read like 5 point, I don't know, had to unplug the wires, plug them in separately, but it was higher, like 5 point. 04 or 02 or something like that. It's still uh, not bad. I don't think you hear the radio in the background. I've got my Swan 350, or not 350. I used to have a Swan 350. My Swan 500C uh, running. Some guy over in Europe chattering away. Anyway, that's kind of it for the video. So, you know, are these meters alright? Yeah, you know, I would stay away from the mass tech from what I've seen so far. You know, Centec. They seem to be pretty reliable. I've, they've been consistent too. I've turned them on and off. They have a hold button, which is nice. And I've, you know, between ranges and whatever. And, you know, as far as the switch goes, it's a nice solid, you know, detent on the uh, switches, which is nice. But this one's a little, I don't know, it's not sloppy, but um, it's not bad. This one, yeah, actually it's good. But as you can see, it wasn't all that accurate. And then when I did it earlier, it, re it read, I think, 5.01 maybe, so it was close, but um, as you can see it's not consistent between uh, turning it on and off or going between ranges and going back again. It, I guess it doesn't um, doesn't have good repeatability. So anyway, that's it. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed it. Um, have we got any videos planned for the future? I don't think. Oh, maybe some with RF attenuators, but I'm still working on that project. Trying to get an RF attenuator to go from zero, more or less zero, to um, at least 148 megahertz that's reasonably flat. Actually, I did one, but it's kind of on a weird little perf board. I can show you if you want. You got uh, this thing here. It's one of those. Um, this board, I guess, was a a uh, wire wrap type of board that you put a header connector on and plug it into a um, oh I forgot what those frames were you could slide cards in with the Molex connectors or something like that in the back but anyway um, you can't see them but there's a bunch of little um, surface mount devices on it and a couple of caps I actually got this within about a DB plus or minus a half maybe from um, zero to 148 megahertz and um, what was I going to say? Oh, a minus 40, 6 dB or something like that. So, we're getting closer and when we get it where we want it, we're going to etch a couple boards and make it official and see if it works and then we'll do a video on it. Anyway, I'm going to throw a little more extra time in there. So, what? Well, thanks for watching and if you are enjoying the videos or even if you're not, <laughs> you probably are. They're a lot of fun. Um, please subscribe. I'm trying to uh, build up my presence on uh, on YouTube here, so we could get some more equipment and um, 
do some more reviews and testing and and then having fun and hopefully stuff that's educational for everybody that's viewing and um, good product reviews that people can look at and go, oh, yeah, I like that piece, Nick, see it in action, you know, be, see it being used and kind of judge for yourself. I think product reviews on YouTube are so much better than just looking at a stupid ad that, you know, is fluffed for the positive side of anything you buy. They don't advertise the things that aren't so good about it, right? <clears throat> Seven threes, see you again. And to see you